Hi everybody, hello here. So, I think everyone loves field trips. It is an amazing day where you don't have to concentrate and you can just have fun. When I was in elementary school, we always had a big field trip to like an amusement park or something at the end of the year. And everybody was looking forward to it the whole year. That one day, field trip day, it was the best day of the year. Besides holidays, of course. And then the day before the field trip, we packed our bags with lunch and endless amount of sweets. Like, at least a whole bag of sweets. For me, it was also one of the few days that I could eat sweets throughout the whole day. Because my parents did not give me sweet that often. Only once or twice a day. So the field trip was always the best. Also, we went by bus. And when we came back to the school, where our parents would pick us up, we would always hide under the seats. Do kids still do that? Because that was one of the most funny things in the world. Our parents would think that we stayed at, at the amusement park, that our teachers lost us or something, and then their parents would, would like panic, and there would be a class full of giggling children underneath the bus seat until they all screamed, SURPRISE! And we did that every year. It never got old. We always, we always loved it. It was always funny to us. Beside few trips every year, I also had two big journeys that were absolutely amazing. One of which was with a select group of people who voluntarily wanted to go skiing and snowboarding. It was planned by the PE teachers and it was my first big travel without parents. I think I was like 13 or 14 at that point and I was super hyped. I had never gone snowboarding before but I thought it was something along the lines like skating. And I loved skating. So I would be able to go snowboarding as well, at least I thought. But I was wrong. Very wrong. I was terrible at it, and I found it very hard to go snowboarding. And the first night I was completely upset, but after the teachers called me down, I was going for it. I was going to do this and I was going to have fun. And I did. I had fun. It was one of the most memorable journeys that I did in my life. Even though it was hard in the beginning, I pushed through and I um, I did quite well. I can snowboard now, a little bit. So that's a good life motto, just keep going. Even if it's difficult, just keep on going. The other big journey was a travel to Rome, the eternal city. Also the city of ancient buildings and renaissance. And I love Greek and Roman times, and their mythology and gods are so interesting to me. So when I had the opportunity to go to Rome, I took it. And let me tell you, Rome is absolutely amazing. It has beautiful buildings and amazing museums. And very nice people. Except for those who sell selfie sticks on the streets. I don't like taking selfies. I don't want selfie sticks. Thank you very much. I know it's their way to make money. But I, I just don't like selfies. And I don't like selfie sticks. Nothing personal, of course. Rome also has very nice weather. Although we did not notice that when we were there. It rained a lot. No, really, the Forum Romanum almost flooded. It was just kind of a little waterfall there. And all the guys who s sold selfie sticks transformed their selfie sticks into umbrellas and ponchos. And that was quite funny. Because they would just leave for 10 minutes and then they would come back and instead of selfie sticks they just had umbrellas. But we couldn't go into the Colosseum anymore because there was so much rain. And when we got back to our hotel, all the hair dryers crashed because we used them to dry our shoes, which were completely soaked. It rained three days and three nights. And then finally the fourth day, the sun broke through. And our journey continued. What I also find funny about Rome is that there is another country inside of Rome, Vatican City. And I believe that actually some of the law is, is different. It's only a few streets wide, making it the smallest country in the world. And really, it seems funny to me, because you would walk inside a country and five minutes drive brings you to another, and then again five minutes and you're just back in the old country. The last day of Rome, we went to the Chao Tutti, a garden and museum with the most amazing statues made by men. If you like sculptures, this is a must-see. My all-time favorite sculpture is located there. And no, my all-time favorite sculpture is not that one where somebody gets turned into a tree. Also, it's not the statue of David. I don't even think that is located in a Chautity. My favorite statue is this one. This is based on a myth. Two versions of this myth exist. A Roman version and a Greek version. But the base of the myth is that Hades in the Greek version and Pluto in the Roman version fell in love with Persephone. 
so much so that Hades kidnapped her and took her to the underworld. But the mother was so sad that she created an awfully cold winter. So Zeus asked Hades to return Persephone to her mother, and Hades agreed, but not before offering Persephone a last meal. At this meal, she ate six pomegranate seeds. That's not enough to fill your belly, I think. I mean, you'll still be hungry after six pomegranate seeds. Those things are tiny. But anyways, if you eat something in the underworld, you cannot leave. Which is a stupid rule, because that makes it very easy to leave the underworld. Just never eat. That's also, if you're hungry and you eat something, you must stay there forever. It's a weird rule. As the story goes, Persephone needed to stay six months in the underworld each year, because she ate six pomegranate seeds. In the spring and in the summer, she could stay with her mother. And in the other months, she needed to stay with Hades. In those months, her mother would be sad again, and her mother would create another winter. And according to the Greeks, that is the origin story of seasons. Anyways, back to the statue. I love the statue because the detail is so immensely amazing. I mean, just look at the hands and, and, and that tear, and I mean, look at that dog. And me and my friends were staring at this for at least 10 minutes, just thinking about how somebody would be able to carve that out of stone. And I think it's beautiful, and we loved every part of the statue. Until one of my friends noticed, wow, we're looking at a statue of somebody getting kidnapped, and we are enjoying it. We are creeps. Time to explain why Persephone, the name, sounded so weird in my video. I had recorded like everything and I was st I, I had started animating and I was having that whole backstory, that whole myth, I had it in the back of my mind. And then I went to school and the topic of myths came up. And I was like, oh, you know that, that myth about, about the abduction of Persephone? Because that is, that is how you write it. You write it like Persephone. So I thought you pronounced it as Persephone. And everybody looked at me weirdly. Somebody said, do you mean Persephone? It was at that moment I knew I did something very wrong. So I either had the option to record it all again. Part of my animation would go lost and I would do it all over again. Or I would re-record the name like three times, four times, and then just paste it into the file. So that's what I did. And that's why it sounds weird. I hope you still all enjoyed the video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I try to post as much as possible, but animation takes a while. And I hope to see you on the